I'm Randolph and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our starting 11 prediction show for the game versus Northern Ireland. The Glen Whelan testimonial, I suppose we'll call it. Yeah, the Glen Whelan Battle of Ireland, is it? Seems, yeah. Seems um, looking at it like as a kind of an overall thing, as a, it's a bit of a bit of a pointless game, in my opinion. Coming in, um, has yeah. to be played though. The, the, the timing is strange, right? Um, given how hectic a lot of the players' um, schedules have been and are at the moment. Um, <clears throat> yeah. The, the only thing you would say is kind of the way the the League of Nations competition has kind of distorted. Um, the opportunity really for people that are you know not not regulars in the international setup uh, because a manager has an, an excuse now of you know using the justification that there's qualification as as the end result of, of not making you know blood blood as ma and as many new players and you know giving opportunities to players that you wouldn't necessarily be regulars and look there's a there's a number of players that in our in our squads that you know would be regulars in the squad but wouldn't necessarily be regular starters or be experienced at international level and i think this is the one negative aspect of, of that new format of the competition it's 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 taken away that opportunity so you know maybe maybe that's the only little positive that we can try and try and swing in that the hopefully it you know he'll give a few more players opportunities he'll try a few more things out because yeah. uh, we're everyone i think i can safely speak on behalf of every football fan in the country we're sick of the same old ding dong yeah well we might as well kind of get into a kind of a positive frame of mind and try and pick look our... at you mr positive again yeah, trying my best. It's, it's 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 hard. I can't do much with the with the uh, management we have in place at the moment. But look, look as I say, we're recording kind of late at night. You're only coming fresh out of work after been working all day, so we'll try our best to keep it positive, and we'll try our best to uh, team. to to get a, a reasonable enough team because uh, I think I just think it's gonna be. Uh, well, we are predict it right. I think Randolph is a de is a nailed on. Ah no, Queefin Keller has to be a dead dead cert for this. You think so? I just think with the fact of being Northern Ireland and yeah, does that uh, you know, bragging rights and stuff like that, and it's just yeah. such a. O'Neill's uh, kind of quotes, you know, when he was asked about, we'll speak about who'll who'll be starting and possibly be captain for the day. Um, but his quotes that led on from that are like, oh, this is. I hope that's the only friendly thing. You know, he spoke yeah. about the passion from. You know that's that's there. But the a quote's actually on our Instagram, so you can check that out if you haven't seen it already. Yeah, um, but it's fighting talk, isn't it? So I think that's taken. Well, it's funny because he, uh, Martin O'Neill himself, have played I think sixty odd times for the North as well, and captain yeah. them as well. So it's it's a bit of a game where he won't want to lose either, I believe. So I yeah, think... and like between the two football associations, has it been a bit touchy to say the least? Particularly, I don't think they're too fond of us. No, they are now. Should they wouldn't have done the the, the euros? Yeah, well, I think there's there's more financial carrot at the end of that. But but they're they're quite uh, even the time when it was the the rice saga uh, kind of came out. There was a couple of kind of quirky quotes of kind of good enough for you. Karma comes around with the fact that we may have there's a couple of players that might have uh, changed jerseys the last couple of years that would qualify for both. So I, I think there's going to be an edge to it. Yeah, but look, yeah, I I guess you're alluding to the fact that Shane Duffy and. And James McLean, as all sorts, Darren Gibson's of this world, yeah. but they they think of themselves as you know Irish. So if that's the way they feel, oh yeah, no, the so. players are fully justified. I just think there's an edge there. I think, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we look at it like anyway. We go back to yep. the the kind of gone a bit. So of, so I think it'll be Randolph and goal. I don't see O'Neill changing it. Yeah, but I think it's I think I'll still go with the back three. I think. The fact that Kieran Clark, Clark's been left out, um, I don't know whether he's injured. I haven't heard anything. I haven't <laughs> heard. A few people were saying, was there another row? I don't know. If you do know, let us know in the comments. It would be interested to hear. You know, especially if you're a Newcastle fan, you might have been insider info. You might have got injured. I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, so I yeah, think, I think I think it'll be Kyo. I think yeah. it'll be Kyo, Duffy, and um, Kevin Long. That's that's why I think the back three will be if he goes to the back three. Yeah, it's it's hard to see Martin O'Neill picking anything different to that. Really, um, it would be nice to I think freshen it up a bit, a little bit. Um, I'd like Egan in there again. Egan but, would be nice. I think there. he needs to have some sort of plan in place for when we play Denmark. You know, I, I said it earlier on a, on Facebook on the comments. Someone commented saying, oh, "Why should McLean be in there and something like that?" I said, "We need to have a template in place. We need to be looking, as he said, he's using this game as a test for Denmark." We need to. Like, I'm not saying that Northern Ireland are in yeah. any way on par or level like Denmark are street to heaven of both, both of us. Both of us, yeah. Um, let's be honest about it. Like, there's no point sugarcoating it. But 
all I want to see is, you know, have a game plan that we're going to kind of come to and use and maybe implement. And, you know, if we if we go with a team that he might want to play against uh, the Danes, then we we'll go into that and say, say if we win this game, you know, take the confidence from that game, that team and that confidence into the next game against Denmark. And you, you could be looking at yeah. more positive outcome, yeah, I believe. It, it's hard to see him going any different to that back three, I have to say. Really yeah, do. and then I think, <coughs> well, I think, well, I think you'll go with is a, it'll definitely he, he pretty much said it today. Coleman's a dead cert for that right wing back position. Yeah, it's funny that I was as we we're coming over but here. He's I was, really, I was just games. Uh, yeah, time. no, he's he, he's on a fresh run of a fresh run of form, even if I can get my words out. But I was trying, was debating in my head all like all afternoon really, and I still haven't made my mind up. I would personally, for the friendly, I would lean towards giving Doherty another run at right back. Our right wing back, sorry, in, in this case. Just because Coleman's come back after, you know, pretty bad run of injuries. He's, he's, I know he's in good form and all that, but I think I think he could benefit as much, you know, from from getting a, getting a break here and be focused on the Denmark batch. Because um, no, he had a break from his injury. so he had Yeah, that I know, but, you know, it's that initial phase of drilling gets you through a couple of games and then you come through. I would, I just think, I don't see the benefit of playing him again here. Thursday night, I think we will get. He's the more. captain. Yes, he is, but he can still lead from from you know in the dressing room and from the sideline. Like, oh, it's it's not a B or a B. No, if we win this game, yes, there's huge pride and all that. But, but I think he, he's he's gonna play him regardless. Oh yeah, look, Martin Reid's gonna play him regardless. I just think we would get as much benefit. I was starting Doherty again there just to like, get him another run into the game. Uh, get if he went with a four, I'd like to see maybe Doherty is a right winger. Yeah, hundred percent. But I, I just I don't see yeah. him. I don't see him getting in. He even said it in the press conference today. He goes. You know, Seamus Coleman is. is I just is think it's such on. a shame that we. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is just a debate for for who we go on and on again. I just think. Well, I'm not. I'm not ashamed yeah, well, all the, day the, long. The, the blue nose here, particularly he's back in form and all that. <laughs> Decent game again. Well, he's had, look. I slated him about three or four weeks ago, and I did say he hadn't been playing well, and I did want Darty in ahead of him that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if Seamus had been fit, I would have had Darty in at that present time. And Darty's done nothing wrong. Yeah. I just think Seamus has the experience. He's better than him. He's the captain. He's yeah, but for longer. the thing about it is, you take Coleman out of this game and he doesn't play any plays against Denmark. You know what you're going to get from him. He's going to be. Yeah, but he hasn't been good for him. He hasn't been good for, but he, his form hasn't been good. Jesus, up until the last couple of weeks, his form hasn't been good for quite a while. Yeah, but he, this was the start of the season and there was a break. The, yeah, his, his injuries and, and all that. He's a bad run and the way things were. Whatever. But he, he looks ever. back to his best. He, do, he does. That's what I mean. I. If you pl- there's going to be no difference in his play. If anything, he'd be slightly better in the Denmark game if he doesn't play. I just think there's a chance just to keep Doherty going on a run. He's not good. Don't start him against Denmark, but I would uh, I would start him in this game. He's not. Martin O'Neill's going to pick him, but that's just my opinion. Just and nothing against Coleman. He's a fantastic player, fantastic captain. Uh, and there's no you know, name everything as well. Yeah, the yeah no absolutely no he is like I, I, I respect where respects is due. I know there's a big football rivalry between us and all that, but you know the only thing you unifies us and all that. And you know would be you know even Coleman give a very very decent interview I suppose that we described. But you know even I think it was after the game at the weekend and he's just he's talking about football in a more general aspect and you know he's going to we'll get paid a lot of money and this is a job to do the talking on the pitch etc etc and you know he spoke very well and he's a decent skin and all that. Uh, and we're, we're we're lucky to have him, but I just think I'm going to cont- contradict myself big time here. I just think for the sake of the friendly, it would be nice just to get Darty again. I'll give them a half each or something like that. But give them a half each, but James is, is okay. You can get him to start. start. It would. I just think there's this huge benefit to getting them to getting them to get some game time. Look, I'm really looking forward to the comments. Yeah, on this I know. I'm going to, get, <laughs> going to get slated on that, but you know, a young kid coming through the blocks. The last thing we need to do is play him a couple of games and dish him out. Or even play him at uh, left wing, Mac. But yeah. look, I think McLean's is, is, is nailed on for that. And not that I want him at that position. How but do I think he's nailed on. Look, again, speaking about getting slated in the comment, they're going to get absolutely lynched for this. What is the point of playing McLean in this game? Honestly, what is the point? Maybe he's begged to, to be. Yeah, look, I'm sure there's huge personal, yeah, personal pride. pride yeah. But. It would be madness to start him in this game. He's going to do it, but it's madness. Like, from a number of different aspects. Firstly, he's been bang out of form for us. He's been terrible for Ireland. All heart, yes. But if, if passion and pride and hard, hard work is your best attributes for that you can say about a player for the last while, then we're struggling big time. Um, there's a lot of... We're not going to, I'm not going to get into it, but there's a lot of negative shit going on recently. He's... 
Yeah, got, the Poppy he, Society. The, yeah, he's got. A, he said a, he's received an un, un, un terrible amount of abuse, both to himself and both to his family and all that. And by the way, we do stand with McLean and everything, and you know we're completely behind yeah, no, him that, in, that's that, a, in that that's respect. A, so anyone yeah. who thinks that we're against him in any way, we're not. No, 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 it's not just in the football aspe- aspect. I think you should play players in their right position. Yeah, at yeah. The end of and, I, and all that, like he's coming into the game. There's going to be so much spotlight. There's going to be so much. Like it's the timing of the game after the weekend just gone by as well, and all the that sensitive politics shit that unfortunately wraps itself into into the game. Um. What I don't see why what benefit is to us, and more importantly, he's not available for the Denmark game. So we need to, like I said about you know getting players uh, an opportunity. I think here is the most sensible thing to give another opportunity to a player who's going to be played there next week. Yeah, well that's what that's why I think is that Ender Stevens should be nailed on for that position yeah. because he's going to play against Denmark, and that's why I think he should be in there. As I was saying about a template that we should look towards to get you know our team to play, and you know. <laughs> Once we kind of have a settled, I suppose you call it a back five because you got the two wing backs yep. in the three. Um, if he plays that, because you don't know, like he could go back to the four. You know, you never know with this fella. That's the most annoying thing about it. But I think if me or you were to choose the team now, we would rightfully have Anna Stevens as At left wing left back. back. Yeah. yeah. Then going into midfield, we all know Glenn Whelan is going to be starting as probably a holding midfielder. Yeah, he'll play the he'll play the six. Yeah, without doubt. Yeah. So like, there's no real point talking about uh, him. It's going to be John O'Shea. 2.0, like the USA, come on, or start the game, probably come off after half an hour, or 40, 40, maybe maybe half, yeah. and then get his I just hope things. it doesn't, with the greatest respect to the wheel and all that, and despite, you know, he's been talking with a player that's divided opinion the last, like the, the last couple of years. He's done a job for us. He's been... There's times where he's got lynched and it's it's more our system and the system, the way he's ended up and trying to shore up a, a negative brand of football. Um, he's always given it all. I wish him the very the very best. It's nice that he gets this opportunity, but I just hope this doesn't overpower the game. That the, the sole focus really is on him and all that and kind of distracts us because I think this is a, a useful uh, platform for a number of players, to, to, both in terms to get used to the system and for a couple of players just to get better into the better in, in, into that system then and I just hope this doesn't overlie too much I hope you know there's plenty of time before and afterwards for all the congratulations etc and give him the, the ovation that he deserves and all that but I just hope it doesn't overpower the game yeah well I think again it's going to affect uh, a couple of players in terms of you know I'm looking at that team and I'm looking at that system and I struggle to see where Callum O'Dowd will get in um, I think he for the last couple of internationals has been very good I haven't really been watching him at Bristol City to be honest so mm-hmm. I don't know how his club form is but I do know when he plays for Ireland he'd just be quite decent and you know looking at that I, I do believe it'll be Whelan Arthur Hendrick I think that'll be the three I hope he doesn't go with that three I think he will if you had a three who would you go I'd with? like to get Huron in there just for the, yeah because just given my Wolves book or Alan Brown yeah both them both players are in good form you know Huron got an unscreamer for Villa there you gotta you gotta reward players that are in good form we don't have an abundance of a squad where you can not play players you know and get by if you have an informed player and go okay we still have loads of competition here you're gonna have to graft your way in I think we're very much a reactive team where we need players that are in good form that's when kind of leaning on and I rambled for more than I should have had about Doherty you know players like that to while they're in good form to reward them get them introduced into the system bed them in etc and I think it I would I think it's a perfect opportunity to give him time he probably won't he's probably going to go to that three um it's it's weird it's, I know Whelan's retiring but it's nearly a three that you play against Denmark <laughs> do you know what I mean uh, yeah well, it, or, or with um you probably have Harry Arthur holding yeah Arthur holding against well, Denmark you, but, but you also look at it and the player that we actually forgot at left back was could have been Robbie Brady as well, you forget that he's back in the Yeah, squad. well, like, I, I, I was trying to think of my three earlier on, and I would go, uh, you know, with Whelan, you're going to get all that defensive graft and all that. I think we're going to have a, there's an opportunity for us to have a bit of the ball, and I'd like to go with it with um, Brady one side and Hur on the, on the other and, and go with that three and just try and play some ball. Yeah, I'd like to see Robbie Brady in there in some shape or form I think like he's, a, he's the as, per- a, as a number 10, maybe, because they're going to have two, two up front. Yeah, um, I, I'd like him, I'd like him uh, almost... You know, it, it is a you know, left-sided eight or whatever you want to call it, but there is an opportunity to to push on and and, and sit with a two then with the others. But I wouldn't have him in there with his buddy Hendrick. I know he hasn't been great for uh, Ireland, but 
Maybe the two of them. Are fair. Perhaps uh, I I just like to see Brady get a start again, get more. You know, the, the, you know, it's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. What I described with Coleman, there's a player that doesn't need time in my opinion, because he's just going to come in and settle in. I think it's the complete opposite with Brady. I think you give him 40, 50 minutes, and then you, you take him off, and hopefully you get you know, you know get something similar for Denmark, because we will need him against Denmark, even just for set pieces yeah. uh, and, and stuff like that, um, and bet him back in. So I think he's he should be nailed on to start, I hope. Right, so you want a three of Whelan, Hurahin... And Brady. And Brady. Not a chance at Hell Martin, it is going to pick yeah, something. Well, I get it. I'll agree with you. I'll agree with Brady and I'll agree agree with them. Huron? No, um, Whelan and Whelan. Brady. Okay. Uh, well, well, but you, I was going to go with Hendrick. You go with Hendrick. I, think he, I just think he's going to go with Hendrick either way. Oh, he probably will. He probably will. Um, and again, we're talking about these players. I, I know what you're saying about trying to embed players. I just don't think he's going to do it. But yeah. if, we're, if we're talking about players at the top end, I'd like to see the Preston duo of, of Maguire and Robinson start together. Yeah, for certain. Yeah, that, that. I, I don't think anybody, any football fan at the moment could could pick another two strikers for us. I think it's paramount that those two get an opportunity and get an opportunity together uh, and in the system and, and, every, and everything that goes with that. And they have to start. If whatever, but like Martin O'Neill, Martin O'Neill likes to throw you know a rabbit with every team selection. There's all as you look at the amount of times that we've been... So I was Christy would probably be that extra oh, midfield, you know that? Like, like the, the amount of times you get a team sheet handed to you in at the Viva and then you're like oh, the whole room like it's full of experienced journalists and media people and TV presenters etc and the full room is like what's he doing here what system is it today like I've never seen a man and they even like have a, graphs of it and no one's still making yeah it. and even what, what game was it where he, they gave us the graph and all that and it was completely fucking arse waves you know yeah, was it the Denmark it was you know uh, oh Martin and, and th- those are all supposed and to be you always got mad at the match yeah, yeah Jesus but uh, yeah, like, Martin O'Neill must have picked that one. But like, if you're looking at it, I think the other thing is is whenever Whelan goes off, I think it's important that we that Williams comes on and takes the number six role because I I'd like to see him play there against Denmark. Or Myler. Oh, no. That's his army, isn't he? Yeah. Look, look, Myler's another one of those players that's steady Eddie. You know, kind of a job. I just I don't like him. I, I wish I, I wish he stopped getting called up now at this point. I, I, I like I, we saw Williams I think it was against Poland in particular were just demanding the ball the difference that that meant was having a number six demanding the ball off the off the back f- five if you want to call it but off the defensive unit come across spraying balls quick balls um, particularly if you have those two strikers up front like they quick quick ball and they'll give any defence a handful I think it's just so important that you know we play a bit of ball in midfield and it all comes down to the num- a lot of the plays started with the number six one thing yeah. that you might have rightly criticism of Whelan at times is that he's a bit slow you know he has to take a touch and turn around and then there's a defence Williams is well, a lot of time he gets bypassed yeah there's that there's that one as well but Williams is, is one of these players where he's able to take it on the run and ping a ball yeah, and, yeah. And, and get a start he's doing well to be fair he's obviously scored against Wells as well yeah um, so i just like to when Whelan gets taken off for the big clap and everyone will rightly give him the craze I think it's I think it's then isn't the perfect opportunity again yeah. But Moyler will argue his case because the last time he didn't get a, a, a run and they qualified as a route with Martin O'Neill. But we won't really get into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought we're only kind of really arguing over now over, we're not arguing, but we're kind of debating over the the midfield. So I think we'll let you guys decide who you want the other midfielder to yeah. be, whether it's um, Hurahin or Hendrick. Or if yeah, you had someone well, else in there, yeah. Uh, well, if you want to go Brown. like Alan Brown, we could just I'll, while you're while you're rambling there, I'll just go pick through the squad. You know the other players that we haven't mentioned: uh, Arthur Myler, Williams, Brown, O'Dowda. And we spoke plenty about McLean, Brady as well. Um, yeah, how about any of the strikers? Then would you like to see the two of them get the whole ninety minutes? Just, I I just I just want to see us score goals. I want to see the lads get a run and take the chance. I'd like love to see, see Maguire score a goal. Yeah, um, but I'd like to see both them score. Both yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but I think Robinson another mile mark, uh, milestone with 150 goal or something, something big. He's, or... he's doing well for Preston, yeah. but the two of them really like each other. It's evident, like they're always posting about each other or whatever, and they're always like very friendly or whatever. I would just like to see, even if one of them assists the other, and just carry that little bit of confidence going into the game. I just I don't see the likes of Scott Hogan or anything really making it a huge. How about the other two kind of I suppose the new, newest like O'Brien. Again, we know what we're going to get with him. Um, that aerial presence that he he's done quite well, but I'd like to personally he didn't do like well to, in the competitive I'd game. I'd like to see a personally a different style of football. 
Um, the two youngsters, the two nation courts and up of Emmy, if I can pronounce his name properly. I would don't, you, would you, yeah, would you like to get a I'd like to see those? I guys? mean, I think Ron Curtis has been good, and you know we watched him a few times with the under twenty ones and with Derry, uh, the season just gone, and he was very very good, but I just don't see him. I just don't see him getting in there. I think he will go with. McGuire and, and it's funny Robinson. like speaking speaking of courses to turn around back and the last time I saw him play he nearly started a right with the Bowes fans up in Daily Mount it's his last game for Derry he's been getting a bit of he's been a stick back and forth and he, he kind of walked all the way back clapping and Bowes fans weren't yeah. too happy and nice. then, you know, it was a funny moment um, <laughs> the, the, the waving goodbye to the league and all that and he's been Jesus he's been banging in the goals but he actually seems like a very decent enough lad as Absolutely, well and, yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's made the grade he's gone to England he's gone up the under 21 route and now he's he's got his chance and he's been called for a few squads now. If he does get a chance, fair play, same with Obafemi, but for me it just doesn't really, you know. I think out of the two I'd like to see, I'd like to see Curtis get a get yeah. get give get him kind of under the radar with the whole Obafemi. Yeah, well that's become a bigger issue because of the whole Rice saga and should we have cap players just to tie them up, etc. Yeah. etc. Et um the strange one then was that there's a couple of youngsters in the squad, of course. Um, Keller in goal as well is kind of call up just I'd because. I like see him get a half. He's not going to though, is he? He's going to be another supple. Why call does he up. keep getting? The, I know Leo Connor got. Yeah. Uh, I was with Leo Connor. Then it's, 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 it's just training. It's just yeah. He's like pointless. Uh, pointless. Well, I think we're the only team in the world that do provisional squads as well. So like, yeah, well, there's you know there's a couple of club man in and a couple of the others there that called on the squad and didn't even train and got dropped out. That logic to me seems a bit questionable, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, fair enough, I can see like the likes of Brennan, or like O'Con- like um, O'Connor and Keller into the squad just to get used to the setup and you know all everything that goes with it. But yeah, it's a bit of a talking expert. Um, but there you are. Um, that's what that's, we rambled together. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're keepers Randolph, our back three is Kyo, Long, Duffy, Coleman for a half. <laughs> we got Ender Stevens. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, sure if Stevens, we remember Brady at left. No, no, um, like Brady in midfield. Okay, so Brady and Whelan are dead sets for us, and then it's a toss up between either Hendrick uh, for me, uh, or some some of you people out there might want Adam Brown, and then up top I think we're the majority of us would be in agreement. Yeah. Some of you might want to see Alba Femi. Um, but you know, let us know in the comments or Curtis or whoever. Derry City fans would be interested to hear what yeah. you, you guys think. But uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments as always. Huge thank you to Halfway Cabs for sponsoring our show. Uh, don't forget to download their app. The link is in the bio. And uh, thanks for watching. See you the see you Thursday night down there, Viva. That's it. All right, so